Motor Neurography of the Median Nerve Registration of F-Wave The recording of the F-Wave is clearly shown by the example of the median nerve. The placement of the recording electrodes is similar to the motor neurography of the median nerve. Thereby, the active electrode is stuck on the abductor pollicis brevis muscle. Meanwhile, the inactive electrode is placed on the respective enthesis, the anterior thumb joint. The grounding strap is fixed at the wrist between the stimulation and recording electrode. In contrast to the motor neurography, the stimulation electrode is placed on the wrist above the median nerve. This ensures that the cathode, which is the minus electrode, points to proximal. The current intensity is gradually increased until the amplitude of the voltage of the potential does not continue to rise. The current intensity will then increase by another 20% to ensure that all of the nerve fibers are stimulated. During a constant current intensity, 10 consecutive stimuli are triggered. However, not all have to be responded to with an F-wave. Following this, the latency cursors of the F-waves are placed. The amplitude markers are set on the highest negative and highest positive peaks. In the results table, the shortest latency of F-waves, the longest latency of F-waves, the average of the latency of F-waves, the variance of F-waves, and the appearance, the so-called persistence of F-waves, are displayed in percentage form. The repetitive stimulation by using the example of the accessory nerve. The repetitive stimulation, which is also known as the myasthenia test, is a measurement for the diagnosis of myasthenia crevice. This is a neurological disease that is characterized by stress-related muscle weakness. In this instance, the examination will be demonstrated on the accessory nerve. However, it should be noted that it is also possible to examine all other motor or mixed nerves. The disease begins in the proximal musculature and spreads toward the peripheral. Therefore, it is useful to record at both a proximally small and a peripherally large muscle. The active electrode is placed directly on the trapezius muscle, which can be felt out when the patient constricts the muscle by pulling his shoulders up. The inactive electrode is placed on the clavicle. The grounding strap should be moist and it must be attached to the upper arm. The accessory nerve is stimulated laterally in the neck behind the sternocleidomastoid muscle. The exact stimulation position can be determined by turning the patient's head to the opposite side. The stimulus intensity increases slowly until the amplitude of the potential does not rise any further. To ensure that all nerve fibers are stimulated, 
the stimulus intensity is increased by another 20%, which means that the supramaximal stimulus intensity is reached. Following this, 10 automatic stimuli are triggered consecutively. These will enable you to observe an obvious muscle contraction in the patient. Following measurement, the patient must maximally constrict the muscle for approximately two minutes. In addition, he should move his shoulder up against a resistance. During the phase of muscle contraction, it is recommended to keep the stimulation electrode at the neck to avoid a repositioning of the stimulation position. Subsequently, the measurement is repeated with the same stimulus intensity as was the case at the first stage. Displayed in the results table are the amplitude values of the individual measurements and the decrement, that is, the amplitude reduction in percentage form. The amplitude decrease is shown in a descriptive manner in the graph.